let's be honest, the best way to grow in your greenhouse over winter is in beds in the ground. But I don't have that option. That's because of something called thermal mass. The more soil and the more area of that soil you've got, the more heat that will hold and the more it will take for that temperature to drop in it and then for it to freeze. And you'd be surprised, even my massive raised beds in the garden freeze over winter. So the last thing I want then is lots of little pots with plants in them that it's just going to be too easy for them to freeze. I want to create that thermal mass thing. If I can, I want to create beds to grow in without actually digging beds into the ground. So here's my plan. You guys know me well enough by now. You know I've got heaps of compost. I've also got lots of different types of these trays. So last year, I basically just filled these trays with compost and used them as little beds to grow in. The only problem being, they're not really deep, which is fine. They were fantastic for growing like the little lamb's lettuce, uh, you know, the kind of like salad leaves, the little lettuces, all that type of thing. When we got to things like broccoli rab, it's quite a big plant and it wants a bit more root space and the mustards can get really big. So I want to just try and do something that's going to give them a bit more root space this year. So here's my idea. I've got loads of compost. I've got these heavy duty rubble sacks. I'm going to fill them with compost and just seal them up and I'm going to use them like big deep grow bags. That's the plan. Let me shut the door and I'll tell you. <sighs> You're just a wee bit of a strange angle. Let me fix you. That better? I've got no issue with being honest with you guys. That idea so didn't go to plan. I've had to go buy grow bags. Totally no. I thought I had the best idea ever for doing this and it turned out to be the worst idea ever. Like in the history of bad ideas, this was up the top. Like something if Baldrick and Percy had put their heads together, it's the kind of thing they came up with. So I'm off to the local hardware store to buy some grow bags. This is what happens when you try and cheat and not think things through properly. Okay then, peat free grow bags, here we go. My plan had been that since I have heaps of compost and I have those black rubble sacks, I was essentially making grow bags that I'm going to cut the top off of a grow in. Ergo, grow bag in a tree is kind of like having a bed. Buying the grow bags means it's not quite as deep as I would like. Making my own, I was going to make them quite deep. But here's what went wrong. Turns out I didn't have any of those rubble sacks and had to quickly nip on the internet and buy some. And the ones I bought were just not rubble sacks at all. They were just bin liners and they were far too thin. I kept bursting. You need really good, thick, heavy duty bags to make that work. So, because I've got plants that need planted up, I had to just nip to the local kind of like garden centre, hardware store, homeware, whatever you call it. B&Q, we call it here. I don't know what the generic name of those stores are. But I had to nip away and just buy some grow bags. On a Saturday at lunchtime, traffic is mental. That was not fun. Oh, so I'm back and now I can get my greenhouse planted up. So my idea being, I've got three benches and I can have one of these on each bench and use that for the stuff that I'm going to grow in the greenhouse. Now I've already said, this is all getting split. There's already some in the veg truck, some in the greenhouse, some will be going out in my raised beds. The raised beds is the next video because I want to take you through some awesome stuff about that, about growing outside over winter that I think a lot of you guys are going to get a lot out of because not everyone's got a greenhouse. But top tip then, grow bags. Give them a good bash because they're all compressed and you want to get them back to being fluffy and get all that air in them. So. It's dead technical this. Also, 
You can see, and I've mentioned that they're in trays. The reason for the trays, you do not need the trays, but I'm going to put holes in the bottom of these for drainage. And obviously, I use underneath my staging to store stuff. I don't want to water these, and then it all drips over all the things I'm storing. So, they're in trays. These trays are just cheap old grow bag trays. Everything, always, I put a link. If you go to the description of any video, there's a link to my website that's got a gear page, and it will take you to the place where I've got everything set up for you guys, all the links, and you can see it's in greenhouse, garden, stuff that's always in my pocket, all of that's set out for you guys, so it's easy for you to find. So, holes in the bottom. That's therapeutic because I've had one of those weeks at work this week. Stab the hangs. I know that's confused you. I've just fluffed it up and now I'm bashing it again. I'm not compressing it. All I'm doing is making sure it's an even flat layer because otherwise you're watering it'll all go all over the place. Right, knife again. What I'm going to do, if you use grow bags, you might grow your tomatoes in them and you'll just cut like three holes. You might even then put a flower pot in them. I'm gonna cut an actual rectangle out the top I'm using all of this so it's like a little bed, okay, rather than just cutting holes for the plants. It's just about making it easy for me. I planted up a bag over here and the camera overheated so it lost all of that footage. So all you missed was I planted some broccoletti on this side, but I mentioned I'm not just going to plant, say, one bag is where the broccoli wrap, broccoletti goes, or broccoletto rather. I'm going to go, some of it's there, some of it's maybe over here, and I'll put different crops in each. Because, trust me, you're growing in your greenhouse or your polytunnel or whatever over winter. You're creating a lovely, safe, or pretty much frost-free place for all those little pests, and you're filling it with food. So you are going to get pests like you would at other times of year. It's just the way it works. But, you know, as gardeners, we have to work with these types of things. The pests are just part of the cycle of life and we have to try and manage things. So I'm not going to put all of my eggs, so to speak, in one basket, just in case. So I've got some broccoletto over here. I'm going to do some pak choy over here. Now, I've got two types of pak choy, right, and I'm laughing There's a reason. I do green pak choy and red pak choy. And last year, for about five months, every week, I was asked, what's that red plant? That's really pretty. And I had shown you guys me growing it. I talked about it all the time, and I was constantly just going, it's pak choy. It's pak choy. It's pak choy. So I'm doing green pak choy and red pak choy. Red pak choy will have these nice red leaves. Now, it still has the green stems, but it's called red stem pak choy. Okay. Now, again, everything I'm growing, all the links to the seeds and the details and everything are on my website. So, again, I'll put a link in the description below to go to that page on my website to tell you all about this stuff. And you can buy seeds if you want them. Right. Red pak choy. Now, the thing is, the green pak choy can grow way faster than the red. Sown on the same day, in the same places. I find this every year, the green just grow faster. Yeah. God, I'm feeling guilty and I'm lifting things and they're all really dry. Right, okay, these will probably not come out the tree because they're so dry. Oh, and I've just torn it. That's torn it. You sit there. Right. Yeah, they're so dry, they're crumbling. Now, one of the things to remember, when you're planting things like pak choy, they actually can get quite big. 
So think about how much space you're giving them and what size you want them to be. And I suppose when you're thinking about that, it's about what you're going to use them for. Oh man, this is just like dust. Don't copy me, I'm a bad plant mum. Can't believe I haven't watered these properly. I thought they're soaked, but clearly not. So I'm treating these grow backs just like I'm planting these in the ground outside. You know, I'm just making a hole and putting them in. There's nothing fancy to this at all, okay? Um, so I've got four of the red ones. I'm going to put the green ones over here because they do get a bit bigger. Um, so I'm not going to put them here because of the shelves. will I put here? I'll shove some lettuce in this little bit. Do you guys think I'm all super planned, don't you? I totally make this up as I go. I wish I had longer fingers. No. Oh, everything's so dry. I should have watered this before I started planting. Now, I said before, these are the Marvel winter lettuce. My first time ever grown them, and it's a bit weird. They're super, super soft. I was expecting the quite leathery leaves, like sort of the gem lettuces and that type of thing, because that's what last year's lettuce were like. These ones, I'm just finding they're super, super soft. I'm quite interested to see how they work. Will they be super tasty? So I've got the lettuces and some pak choy out in the veg truck. I'm also going to put my garlic out in the veg truck. Um, that's ordered, it's not arrived yet, but that's okay. Because I don't normally plant my garlic until October. Today's the 1st of October, but I've still got time. I'm not sure about these lettuces at all. They just feel so soft. And filthy. So that's it basically. I won't make you watch me just struggle to plant loads of things because it gets a bit dull. But that's generally the idea. So for this type of thing in the greenhouse, I've gone with grow bags to simulate the space of them being in some sort of bed, okay? It gives them more compost, which in turn holds on to more heat. Obviously, the bigger, deeper you can make these, the more heat it'll hold on to, the better it will be. But I'm working with what I've got here. And remember, if you're thinking, oh, I've not seen those grow bag tray things before, I wonder where you got them. There's always a link in the description to the videos where you can go and there's a web page where it will tell you all about them. You can see what they're like and stuff. And then if you want, you can actually shop around to find the cheapest ones because you've seen the details of them. But that is those two for just now. I'm going to get this one planted up with some mustards. That's all I'm doing today. One, 
almost planted up greenhouse. I've still got some bits and bobs to go, but I'm just wondering, all the guys out there then, if this is a new idea to you, you're going to try grown over winter for the first time, your greenhouse polytunnel, whatever. Tell me your ideas. Do you grow in the ground in beds? Um, are you going to grow in trees like this? Are you just going to grow in pots? How are you going to do it? I want to know all your ideas for how you think it's going to work for you. Because that makes it fun. Right, okay. The hilarity of everything going wrong for me today is over. I'm going indoors to get a cup of tea because it's pelting down and it's cold. I hope you guys have enjoyed this. And remember, subscribe if you want notifications every time I put these videos out so that you don't miss them. See you, folks.